it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to share my August wrap up with you. I want to start with a arc that I read that I got from NetGalley. It's called Lies Behind the Woods and I only read 17% of this before I DNF'd it. It's basically about a young girl that gets kidnapped and raped and held hostage and this guy Steve is partly responsible for rescuing her. It's been several years since she was rescued and now she has come to thank him. I did write down a couple of things about this just so I could remember to share them with you. Um, I thought that the writing was horribly lackluster and I felt dirty reading it. It felt like this was the author's idea of like a sexy romp and he was like getting off on writing this story. It just felt very dirty to me. The main character was constantly objectifying the woman and this was all on the first day of them actually meeting um, and it was just really really gross. Um, I have some not direct quotes um, because it is an arc and things may change in the final copy but suffice it to say things like Steve telling Tara the problem is he had sex with her mom and saved her life so the relationship dynamics would be on uneven footing. Steve could not stay with a woman for more than a year and a half because he has daddy issues which ew and Steve wanting nothing more than to dive into Tara's country bred mounds. All of that happens within the first 15% of the book. So even with that, absolutely disgusted, decided to continue on. The next chapter, which was called The Flying Mirror, talks about a new type of intelligent tra traffic enforcement camera that would be able to detect if something looked suspicious about an automobile or anyone in the automobile. Are you crazy? Do you expect me to believe that? Basically, I'm reading a book of convenience where Cornish is jacking off the entire time. Hard pass. No thank you. So the good parts of this book is, is it has a beautiful cover, but the writing was super immature. It was really disgusting. Like I said, I felt dirty reading it and this is not it, you guys. Okay, jumping into what I am currently reading, so you will hear me talking about next month, is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Um, I'm about almost 100 pages into that, and it will be my second, second Bachman, um, and I'm enjoying it so far. It's nothing like earth shattering, but because he has this very unique writing style that it's hard to talk about, but I will try, but we're gonna worry about that next month. So, funny story. Remember how I DNF'd this book last month? It was my first read for August. So I read The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. I DNF'd this during the reading rush and I picked it back up on the 1st of August and I finished it. Um, it's about four, it has like four different stories that kind of all intertwine. It takes place in Alaska in like the 60s and 70s and I thought it was overall a really good story. It just wasn't like super impactful impactful as I wanted it to be so I rated this one three out of five stars. Next up I read He Started It by Samantha Downing and I loved it you guys. I was a little bit nervous going into like a sophomore novel of an author's when I really really loved the first book but guys Samantha Downing has definitely crowned herself as like an auto buy author for me. Um, I did a full like video about five reasons why I think you should read this so definitely check out that video. Um, but yeah we have unreliable narrators and it's about like a, a road trip that they took as kids now they're taking as adults to secure their inheritance and it just it's a wild ride it definitely has stuff in here that you're not expecting and I just I really really enjoyed it I ended up reading this story four out of five stars next I read Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay and I really really enjoyed this I think Roxanne Gay I've only read two of her books you guys I've read Hunger and I've read this one and I think Roxanne Gay is becoming one of my new all-time favorite authors but I only rated this set of essays three out of five stars i thought it was a really good look into like feminist culture and stuff like that but i i've never read a collection of essays or it's been a really long time i'll say that because i definitely read them in college 
sorry I'm adjusting my camera um, I definitely read some in college but it's been a very long time and I I kind of look at it like a collection of essays has to be like a collection of poetry. I really want it to be cohesive. I want it to be like an overarching theme or several themes broken up. And this one is all about being a feminist, um, what is a bad feminist, what is a good feminist, and everything in between. I felt like there were some really like personal stories and then there was some like review of other authors works and it would often spoil that stuff. I thought it meandered a little bit too much for me but like her writing is so good you guys. Like she's definitely a wordsmith. I will definitely read more from her. I think I have two other books by Roxy and Gay on my bookshelf and I'm so excited to get to them because I really do even if I don't like what I'm reading like the subject matter or I don't think the subject matter is good I think the writing is good so that's saying something so yeah I rated this one three out of five stars if you're looking to learn a little bit more about feminism from Roxane Gay's like standpoint definitely pick up this collection I picked up Head Over Heels by Hannah Ornstein and I rated the story two out of five stars um hmm what can I say about this I don't this is like kind of forgettable um it has to do with gymnastics and um like a former gymnastic person with this guy that runs the gym now it's kind of a romance between them but it's also about like her like she got injured so she could never go to the Olympics. So she's helping this guy that runs the gym now that they used to train basically at the same time um, to train this up and coming hopeful. And there's a lot of gymnastics terms in here and I love the Olympics and the gymnastics is my favorite part. It had a lot of like gymnastic talk in here a lot of like the moves and stuff like that I don't know I just the ending was kind of I don't know and it does kind of touch on what happened with the real women's gymnastics team with all the athletes who spoke up about the abuse in gymnastics I'm in awe of your strength bravery and bravery and perseverance thank you for making this sport safer um and then it has like an author's note here in the beginning and it talks about um yeah just all of the things Avery and Haley's lives are shaped by the pursuit of Olympic glory um this is a work of fiction but top gymnast dedication and sacrifice even amid terrible suffering are not as the sexual abuse scandals continues to unfold and the coronavirus pandemic pushes the olympics off schedule my heart goes out to the real life avery's and haley's um so yeah so if you like the olympics like you might get a little bit of enjoyment out of here I think the idea behind the story was good. I think the execution was off. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, next up, I read the book that my neighbor left on my porch. Um, I read The Book Charmer by Karen Hawkins and I will be returning this to my neighbor. I really did like the story. Um, the story itself is set in like a small town and there's this family that I think like every fourth generation someone gets like a certain power or something like that. And one of the main characters that we follow in here, um, she's the book charmer where books speak to her and tell her that a certain person needs to read a certain book so she kind of like pushes books into people's hand even if they think that they don't need it because they do in a roundabout way and they don't really realize it until like afterwards but anyway so this new family I guess like moves to the town and she works as like under the mayor and she's put in charge of this committee to handle this like really important festival to the town and the town is dealing with some financial trouble and she's trying to like 
save the festival type thing. I really like the small town vibes. I like the atmosphere. I like the idea of the book charmer. This is the first book in a series. Um, and I already know like the second book in the series follows like her sister that do, does like teas and stuff. Um, so I am kind of interested, but it won't be at the top of my priority list because the pacing in this was set at a glacier pace. This was the slowest paced book about like this Hallmark movie setting. Like you would just think it would be so good and you'd be so in it, but it was just so slow. Then I read probably my favorite thing of the month. I picked up and read The Trouble With Hating You. And guys, I loved this book. Um, it's a hate to love romance story about, um, Indian culture, Indian marriage, uh, like arranged marriages and expectations. And it's just so cute. And I highly recommend you pick it up if you like hate to love. I'm not going to talk too much more about it because I definitely talk about it in my 24 hour reading vlog, which is coming out on September 1st. So tomorrow, if I'm posting this on the right day, it will be coming out tomorrow, my 24 hour reading vlog of reading this. And guys, I rated it five out of five stars, highly recommend. And I'm so thankful that I just like randomly picked this up and read it this month. It was exactly what I needed. And I buddy read The Troop with Allie, Marcy, Deja. Yeah, I think those are the people, Allie, Marcy, Deja, and myself and then McKay was kind of like along for the ride with us um but yeah so I read this I did a full spoiler vlog for it so you should already know all of my full thoughts if you want to hear all of my full thoughts definitely check out that vlog but I will say that while it did have really really gross moments it wasn't as dark or as gross as I thought it was going to be and without the moments the really bad really cringy animal torture scenes that it had without those I don't know if I would have rated it a three stars I read The Night Swim by Megan Golden I did a weekend reading blog where I read this book I love thrillers that have podcast elements so any of those any thrillers that you know about that have podcast elements definitely leave them in the description of the box down below because I want to read all of the things um, I think this is my third thriller I've read with podcast elements in it and yeah I really liked this one it also deals with uh, like tougher topics um, rape and um, missing people and stuff like that so don't forget that I leave trigger warnings for all of the books that I talk about in my wrap-ups in the description box down below so if you're someone that's more sensitive to certain triggers or content definitely check the description box and I will do my best to put as much information down there as I possibly can um I liked this one because I thought the podcast elements were done really well and it broke up the story but it's kind of like two stories in one and then the podcast kind of merges the two. Um, it's about a podcaster, a true crime podcaster who goes to this small town to cover a rape trial and so you're getting bits and pieces of that but there's also because she's a podcaster people often reach out to her to help her solve cold cases since that's what she's done in seasons past and one woman reaches out to her about the um, death of her sister and she wants um, the podcaster's help to solve it and she's trying to cover this case but she's getting interested in this other one and it's just it's really good I think it's well written um, I would love to read more by this author and I'm pointing down here and the author's name is up here it's a whole thing okay next up this is where we start getting into the big tomes that I read this month the first tome that I tackled is 11 63 by Stephen King guys this book is freaking gigantic um, it took me about a week to read um, I did buddy read this with people in my book club um, 
so that was a good experience i do have a video where i talk about um, my experience of reading stephen king for the first time and kind of my thoughts as i was reading along um, because we broke it up into different parts that we were going to be reading and as i read a part i would update like my thoughts and feelings about the writing the characters the pacing the story the plot all of that so i highly recommend you check out that video i'm actually really proud of that video um and I'm definitely interested in more Stephen King. I have been doing research since I posted that video and I think and I've watched a couple videos about um, like where should you start with Stephen King. I've been taking you guys's uh, like suggestions and stuff like that to heart as well and I think I'm really interested in The Stand. I know probably an odd choice but I'm kind of interested in the stand. And just to be clear, I know that Stephen King has written smaller books. I mean, he's written books like this before, but my point was is the ones that I tend to be interested in are the longer ones. And I'm like, ugh. But anyway, so yeah, um, I think I'm gonna do the stand. I don't know for sure, I don't know for sure, but I think I'm interested in that one. I also picked up a comic this month and this was just what I needed. Like it was such a nice break after reading a big long book like the 11 I showed you guys in my book haul the expectations first reality and that was literally my favorite thing. Oh also this one was hilarious. <laughs> it's like this is my husband with my hair going up his nose all of the time. I just think this is so funny and then if you just want to laugh like see if your library has it if not just like go to the bookstore and read it while you're there because it's a super quick read obviously but like you might want to own it I mean I'm glad I own it because I know when I need a really good laugh I could just like pick this up and read it again so I'm really happy about that and the last two books that I read this month you guys are these bad boys Something I honestly never in a million years thought I would read. Who am I? I read these bad boys that uh, the audiobooks for these guys are over 30 hours a piece. I think this one is around 32 hours and I think this one is around 38 hours. Um, and it doesn't look that bad. Do you see the difference? <laughs> So yeah, these are so much longer than they appear. Um, so full disclosure, I have watched the first three seasons of Outlander on Netflix and I love it. And I have started watching the fourth season, but I think I'm only like two or three episodes in. But I definitely want to continue in the TV series. And um, my husband and I actually watch it together because we both like it. But I was challenged by my book club to read both of these books this month. And I accomplished my mission of reading both of them. Um, the first book follows, if you don't know, this is basically like a time travel book about our main character, Claire, who travels back in time to Scotland in like 1743 and she marries this Scottish man named Jamie and she obviously has a husband back in the real time and it's just like all confusing and conflicting um but I ended up reading the first book three stars. Um, I thought that it was a good thing that I was listening to these on audiobook, which if you want um, to join Scribd, I can give you two months for free by clicking the link in the description box down below. Um, that was the only way I was able to read these. Um, but yes, yeah, so huh, the language, the places, and the names are all like Scottish, obviously. And yeah, I read thrillers, you guys. I read romance. I read poetry. I read contemporary. This is completely out of my comfort zone, and I just thought it was really slow. I thought it was way longer than I needed that it needed to be. And in the second book, I ended up reading Dragonfly and Ember two stars because it was much slower paced 
and it dealt with too many things in one book and I think it definitely could have benefited from concentrating on just their time in France and then other parts been in other books but this just covered like so 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 much and it was all about like battles and kings and lords and um just it was bouncing around in time and yeah it was just not as good so I did read these this month and I do feel accomplished I am going to put my live review of my video that I posted for my book club right here. Hello, I am here to do my live review of both of these books. I read Outlander by Diana Gabaldon and Dragonfly and Amber by Diana Gabaldon. And <laughs> wow, these definitely are not books that I would ever, ever, ever read if it was not for this challenge. So I guess I read outside my comfort zone this month, which was great. And plus, like, can we talk about the size of these books first? Because, and I was showing people on my team, they were like, oh, they're only like six to 800 pages, like not a big deal. But guys, it's the size of the font. The font is so small. Um, so historical fiction, not my thing. I literally read very few genres, thrillers, contemporary, romance, poetry, and that's it. So, um, okay, so to get into my thoughts, I rated Outlander. Initially, I rated it four stars, but I think I'm going to go with three stars just because, like, the beginning was so slow, like nothing was happening. And I have seen the shows, like the first three seasons, um, I watched on Netflix, like earlier, like previous to this challenge, obviously. Um, and thank baby Jesus I did because <laughs> I don't read fantasy and this almost felt like even though it was historical fiction it felt very fantasy to me like all of these places and names and all of these things I can't pronounce so thank you to audiobooks thank you for watching the show previously um yeah I thought the beginning was really really slow um once she gets to like Jamie and they get married and all of that like <laughs> so cute and I loved that part of it I love Claire and Jamie together and like that part is like freaking gold and ugh, it's just so 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 good and I never wanted that part to end um so yeah so I liked the first part but for like an everyday reader for like the language and the pacing and there's just a lot going on I decided to rate it three stars but yeah, I'm glad I read it. Yeah. Okay, now, <laughs> moving on to the second book. I rated this one two stars because I think it dr tried to do too much. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to, like, think back to the series. Um, I think the show, like, obviously kept me a little bit more entertained and they made it fun and interesting to, like, keep me watching. But, like, reading about battles, political intrigue, war, different clans, different sects of people, not sex, S-E-X, S-E-C-T, <laughs> S, sex of people, uh, different things, like, that's just not my thing. And that's what, like, the majority of this stuff was about. I think I watched some other people that said, like, I think it was Ashley that said, like, the beginning part um she's like in the present you know um and that part I just uh, I didn't really like it and it was just really slow and I know it's like important to the series as a whole because it is about like time travel and stuff like that but like it was just really slow and then when you finally got back you're like finally like you know Claire and Jamie are back together you're in that part of the story it's just they're bouncing around all these different places and like I felt like this one was more set like in one location ish where 
whereas this one was set in like a thousand different locations and it skipped around different years and different things and it was just like too much so yeah I read them I will not be continuing in the series if you paid me a million dollars I would not read another book um but I will continue in the show because the show is 10 out of 10 would recommend I think that's it I think I've said my piece but you'll hear me talk about these again I'm sure that wraps up August I am so proud of myself with the books that I read I definitely read things outside of my comfort zone I am so ready for September you guys I have so many books I want to read and I just can't wait to get started like I said I'm reading anxious people I hope to have some type of video about that coming soon so look forward to that but September 1st is that 24 hour reading vlog of me reading The Trouble with Hating You and you have to watch you guys because I loved that book so 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 much forget to check the description box for 60 day free of Scribd or any trigger warnings, content warnings that you may need for any of the novels that I talked about in today's video. I hope you guys are having a lovely day or night. I'll see you guys again in my next video. Bye!